Um, hi everybody, my name is Estelle Ferrares. I am a professor of philosophy at the University of picardie jules And uh, in this glossary, I am in charge of uh, V for vulnerability. So what I want to talk about today is um, the way vulnerability is used, uh, could be used in order to think and frame our uh, current situation. Uh, so what I want to argue basically is that uh, vulnerability is not uh, something that has to do with uh, uh, ontological immanent uh, fragility of the human body. Uh, it, it is not about uh, our uh, exposure, uh, immediate exposure uh, to a virus. Uh, because I understand uh, vulnerability in this context, as in other contexts, uh, as um, uh, the hollow side of a power to act. Uh, in other words, vulnerability has uh, uh, the, 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 the particularity to name uh, something that is in between uh, two subjects, or a subject and an organization, a subject and an institution, a subject and um, a group, etc., etc. So vulnerability is not a quality that will be, in a way, um, embedded, incorporated in one singular subject. It is something that takes place in between two entities. Uh, so vulnerability, as I understand it, materializes only vis-à-vis -vis power that either threatens to act or, on the contrary, fails to do so. Uh, I am vulnerable to an act or I am vulnerable to uh, the absence of act, uh, especially when I'm sick. So in other words, uh, to speak of vulnerability is to speak of an others or an institution's power to act. And this is why I would like to uh, reformulate the very idea of vulnerability with the idea of being at another's mercy. So there is this idea of being at the mercy which is very important to me uh, in order to understand what vulnerability really means today as, uh, as in general. Uh, so here in our current situation, a vulnerability is involved insofar as we are talking about uh, the vulnerability, so the vulnerability of the sick as well as the vulnerability of those who are not sick or not yet sick. So we're talking about the vulnerability to the undermining of our health systems, to the dilapidation of our hospitals. So it's not so much about the vulnerability of our bodies to a virus, as I said, as it is about the vulnerability to government neglect, past government neglect, and short-lived narrow economic calculation. And now it is also a vulnerability, right now it is also a vulnerability to our lives to be undermined by institutions and policies. So, more precisely, I would say that it's, um, it would be a great to talk about vulnerabilities uh, and those vulnerabilities make system altogether. Uh, we, have, we have different forms of vulnerability vulnerability is more or less uh, 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 bodily uh, embedded uh, and they work together uh, in a very heavy and consistent way especially because as I'm going to, 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 to show I think um, the physical uh, vulnerability of some the ones that are um, already sick triggers and or justifies the political vulnerability of others, or maybe the political vulnerability of all of, all of us, sick, sick person and non-sick. Um, so the starting point is uh, 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 the assumption uh, of responsibility by governments, or most governments, for addressing such vulnerability to the virus. That is, in which terms uh, do they manage uh, this vulnerability, to this so-called vulnerability to the 
uh, to the virus. So as we all know, in, at least in Europe, it takes the form of a unique opposition to flatten the statistic curve of new daily cases. This is uh, what, uh, the direction in which uh, all the policies uh, aim. Um, so here, vulnerability uh, is turned away uh, from its definition as being at the mercy, as I said before, and it is reduced in the very process of its management, of its taking care, uh, to the management of a risk, to the determination of that risk. To put it in other words, vulnerability becomes a numerical precipitation of a risk. So the idea of, of risk uh, implies at least a partial determinacy. On the one hand, it's a known possible, and on the other, it is subject to quantification. Or in any case, the word refers to the circumstances onto which the fantasy of culpability is projected. So, vulnerability management, as it happens now, takes the immediate form for those in charge of it, politicians and doctors alike, of calculations of, on quantities. But actually, those determinations have a, a, a qualitative uh, aspect for the one who are taken care of, for the vulnerable, being again the sick or the, the, the ones who are not sick yet. Uh, this, uh, man this management of vulnerability through the idea of risk um, up, uh, appears to the ones that are concerned, uh, not so much in terms of quantities, of course, uh, but as qualitative and determinations of their entire physical and moral and psychic existence. Um, so there is this discrepancy between the inherent uh, quantitative uh, dimension uh, of uh, the, the, the management of vulnerability when it, uh, from the perspective of the one who are in charge of it, and the qualitative aspect, which is experienced by the ones who are taken care of. So this is a uh, first aspect, and we all painfully, uh, I think, know what we, I am talking about, that is this uh, experience of being just uh, one a tiny element of, um, of uh, a general national figure uh, and just a tiny element of the calculation of this curve. Um, and now, uh, as we know from Michel Foucault, the notion of risk uh, binds us to include uh, the production of violation curves, so uh, in that prospect he was already uh, perfectly aware of what would happen in uh, security territory and population. Um, so because, as Foucault puts it, uh, the point is to try to reduce the most inferable deviant normalities in relation to the normal general curve. Uh, and with uh, this uh, consequence uh, that uh, um, uh, what is sought or after is uh, a smoothing of the occurrences among the various groups, or among, in that case today, uh, among the various periods. And uh, so the necessary consequence is the management of a population in its entirety. And this is very important, and we say, you can say it today, that is, uh, uh, managing vulnerability in terms of risk means not only managing the population, which is already uh, struck by the disaster we are trying to avoid, or that might, or that might be much more likely than other to be struck. But this is really the management of a whole population, uh, and this is what we see today. Um, we um, um, the, 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 the increased vulnerability of the ones who are already sick 
allows, as I said, the political vulnerability of those who are not yet sick, and even what was worth sick. So, uh, and here arises uh, the question of individual rights, uh, from which we have been so quickly dispossessed. Freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, etc., etc., all freedoms that actually we have uh, lost uh, in a few days, in a few weeks, we would have imagined in which situation we are now, only a month ago. And uh, this also in, uh, encompasses uh, the coup de force uh, carried out almost simultaneously in all uh, the countries that are affected, uh, including democracies, of course, uh, those coup de force against constitutional and legal guarantees, uh, as uh, we uh, could see uh, even yesterday in, in France. Uh, but this indicates one thing, I would say, uh, that this possibility existed, that actually our rights were vulnerable from the beginning, uh, that our rights are, were, conditional, they are always conditional. That is, uh, we experience here, um, uh, the, uh, we have a deep and, fr and frightening experience of uh, the vulnerability of rights that actually were uh, claimed as almost uh, biologically uh, funded in the sense that actually we were supposed to be born with rights and uh, freedom was supposed to be according to the declaration of uh, was we were supposed to be born with and actually what we see is that uh, on the basis of a quasi-biological uh, justification uh, that of the exposure to a risk uh, to the bodily risk uh, we are stripped of those rights uh, so I, I would say maybe, and this is what also I'm trying to, 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 to highlight um, uh, with this category of the state of exception and or with this idea of Moses is that actually um, there is this in, inherent um, vulnerability of our rights uh, that become clear today. And the, the interesting thing is that uh, this um, vulnerability, uh, this conditionality, uh, is based uh, on our bodily uh, condition. Uh, also, something I would like to highlight is the fact that the suspensions, the suspension of rights, um, are justified by a responsibility uh, that we would have towards what? Toward the others. But if you want to look more closely, it's not towards the others as concrete others. Actually, the kind of responsibility we have is toward, I would say, the human species. Uh, this is what is at stake here when we talk about flattening the, the, the curve. Uh, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not um, called to exercise this responsibility towards people who count for me. Uh, that matter for me, or uh, for people that particularly that belong to the same community, maybe in a way, but more broadly, the idea is uh, that of a, a, a solidarity or a responsibility and a short toward life in general. I mean, human life in general. So I'm not supposed to go out in order to save the species, right? Um, so uh, there is a call for my responsibility toward uh, a human vulnerability uh, in as much as it is a quality of the species, but again, not the quality of singularities, of all the singularities that might be the components of this, of this humanity. Uh, so it's a question of sparing life as such. And, on, and, and this uh, goes until the point that actually all the responsibilities that I would have toward all the concrete people, especially the ones that are important to me, disappear. And this is what you can see when you face the fact that in France or in, or in Italy, uh, it is impossible 
to care for them. I mean, people who are extremely sick are uh, isolated in hospitals and uh, their family cannot visit them and uh, their family cannot bury uh, or in very, or it is very difficult for them to bury the people they loved. So my responsibility uh, towards the human species uh, is uh, regarded, is uh, framed as much more important than the responsibility I have for concrete orders and especially orders that matter. Um, just very quickly, uh, a few days ago, a doctor said in French media, and I was really shocked, we must understand now that many people will have to die alone. Uh, so he was stating this uh, from who knows and with who knows what authority, but he, he was stating here a, a, a double obligation for the patient to die alone in the name of the species again, for his relative, an obligation and not to take care of him or her. Um, so there is this uh, responsibility which is named but which purpose is to cut uh, the relations uh, between uh, human beings in the name of this huge road entity, which is the spaces. Uh, and this goes with another uh, group or entity that is regarded as relevant right now, if you see. I mean, the, 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 the individual is dissolving itself as uh, the target of, uh, of policy, the vulnerable individual, uh, individual and the, vulner uh, the vulnerable in individual in as much as he is uh, embedded in a, in a social context uh, in, uh, that he has a relationship with other people. Uh, so in, in, one, in one direction, he is directly linked to the species. Uh, but in the other direction, he is also somehow confined into a very old unit, actually, which is the family. Um, this, there is this uh, confinement in this 19th century, I would say, political unit. Uh, family becomes relevant again for population management, inter interestingly enough. And it also becomes again the relevant unit for living together. And the individual is sort of between those two uh, extremes, the, uh, the spaces and the family. And at the same time, here again, it's not completely true, because uh, if it is a unit, which is summoned to be the place of daily solidarity, of responsibility, uh, this does not imply the consideration of what happens within it. Indeed, uh, especially in France, I guess, uh, elsewhere, contaminated people, which don't have too severe symptoms, are uh, asked to stay there. That is to say, that contamination within a household is not important. Um, that means that actually, again, even if fa the family uh, is branded as, uh, as uh, the place where you can assume your responsibilities, it is like you cannot have any form of responsibility toward your the vulnerability, the bodily vulnerability to the various of the members of your family. Um, so uh, maybe there is one last point I would like to raise here, which is the question of the vulnerability of our form of life, that is, we don't experience only uh, the vulnerability of our lives in as much as it is in, in, in the hands of uh, some institutions, organizations, and, um, and, and, and laws, but also of our form of life. And here I think it's very important uh, to notice that the way we are stripped from our rights right now uh, have effects, a strong effect in two directions that makes the confinement situation unbearable from, for a lot of us. That is that the fact that uh, our form of life or our previous form of life is threatened uh, through uh, the lack of mastery of 
both space and time. Uh, that is, we are not able anymore uh, to uh, uh, or organize or shape uh, our life according to a special and, uh, and a, 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 a time uh, constraint or, or, or from uh, the mastery again. Um, is, is completely we had on those or the relative master of uh, those uh, is uh, uh, taken away from from us uh, but that works in two opposite direction if you see in two opposite ways uh, we are swept away from space by its very strict determination uh, we are uh, confined locked in very small or maybe sometimes speak up in small spaces in apartments on the one hand without the right uh, to work outside or uh, very limited right to, 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 to work outside and it works the other way for time here uh, the lack of mastery uh, is um, works through the fact that um, uh, it has become completely indeterminate in the sense that we don't know for how long we are here and uh, we don't know uh, I mean we only know that our situation is always revisible uh, and there is even no knowledge uh, of, of the, 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 the probability of what might happen so um, here and this is my last word uh, we can see the way uh, the vulnerability of our form of life uh, which is first a political one because this started with uh, a threat as I said uh, uh, on our rights uh, that materialized because of uh, a perceived vulnerability to what a virus which was, as, as yeah, that was the beginning, actually, uh, an exposure uh, made possible by some political choices regarding our uh, health systems. But so all of this materializes in our uh, daily experience uh, through um, the, the experience we have of a very fragile um, mastery of time and space, of which we have lost. The master. Thank you very much.